talk uh, is a co-author contribution with uh, a James Tao, who is also in the audience, um, on transformation and coupling relations of affine connection. So uh, there are three parts of this. One is uh, we are going to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the transformation of affine connections, uh, general affine connections, uh, even those that admit torsion. Torsion is rarely discussed uh, in involving geometry, and uh, so we want to uh, have a, a thorough discussion about torsion and how this torsion behaves with various kind of transformations on the affine connection. And the second is that we are going to talk about some uh, commutative relationships among these various transformations on FN connection. And uh, the key is to keep track of the torsion while going through these communication, uh, the, these uh, operations. And thirdly, uh, we are going to uh, discuss uh, a kind of transformation that preserves the Kudazi coupling between uh, this FN connection, nabla and G, the metric. So the goal is to ask whether there are more general uh, transformations of the FI connection and the metric uh, that preserve the Kudazi coupling more general than the uh, conformal projective transformation that we, we know. So just remind uh, that we have a differential manifold with a pseudo Riemannian metric and an FI connection. And Kudazi coupling basically refers to uh, this uh, symmetry of a, met of a connection operates on the metric. And another way uh, of expressing that, if we denote this nabla G as the C, C tensor, which is uh, uh, typically used, then C is totally symmetric. So we want to first remark that this Kudazi coupling uh, is a generalization of the levi civita uh, coupling of the metric and the connection. So metric structure and the uh, FN connection structure define two different uh, aspects of a geometry, mm -hmm. while metric gives you <coughs> length or measurement of the angle and so forth, and FN connection tells you about the parallelism uh, of the vector transport. And a priori, they don't have to be coupled in a, a very special way of coupling the metric structure and the FN connection structure is to impose this uh, a compatibility requirement, the standard one being the levis vita coupling, namely the nabla operates on G is zero. And uh, a very nice generalization that's offered by FN defined geometry and Vumin geometry is the Kudazi coupling, namely nabla G does not have to equal zero, but just merely satisfy this symmetry. So uh, this is a, a very nice generalization of the parallelism of a, con a, a coupling between <coughs> a connection and some geometric quantity uh, tensor or operator. So it can be shown that nabla z is Kudazi coupled is equivalent to saying that nabla and nabla star, the dual connection, they have the same torsion. So. Uh, that leads to the well-known definition of a statistical manifold or statistical structure of a manifold, which is a manifold which uh, G and Nabla are put as a coupled and the FN connection is torsion free. So let us record the uh, conjugate connection, the notion of a conjugate connection. Give any connection Nabla and with respect to the metric G, we can define a quantity, which turns out to be a connection, through this formula. So in fact, this kind of a way of conjugation of a connection uh, can be generalized with respect to uh, any like two tens, I mean two, two form, okay, for any two form, for any zero to tensor. We can apply this definition changing G to say an arbitrary zero to tensor Okay, let's, in that case, then the first thing we want to investigate is whether this notion of a conjugation of a connection is well defined or not. Turns out that, of course, there are two slots that you can apply this conjugation operation to, which leading to the so-called left conjugate and right conjugate, which usually are not the same. And we can show that when this two tensor, when this zero two tensor, the two form is 
of uh, is uh, symmetric or skew symmetric, then there's no ambiguity in doing this. In our paper, we investigate the left conjugate and the right conjugate in reference to the two slots. In general, they are not the same. But in the case when this H is symmetric or skew symmetric, they turned out to be the same. So it is well defined. Now, uh, another form of transformation of an FN connection is through a tangent bundle isomorphism, an operator uh, denoted here L. So uh, given the connection nabla, we define uh, the a gauge transform of the connection to be you first you let this L operates on the vector field on, and then you have the just connection the origin nabla and you, you take the inverse of this L right because the nabla uh, uh, you, you take the in, you take the inverse of that let's and it turns out that we can verify that this this is this is a connection this is what is known as the a gauge transform of the connection. So people define, uh, you can also define this uh, Kudazi coupling of Nabla with this operator L in this way, uh, where there is a symmetry between the X and Y. Okay. And uh, it is known uh, in the FIN geometry literature that when Nabla is a FIN, uh, for an arbitrary FIN connection, possibly admitting torsion, and L is uh, tangent bundle isomorphism, then uh, the following three statements are equivalent. Namely, when nabla L is Kudazi coupled, which is the same as saying that nabla and the L transformation of the nabla, they share the same torsion. And the L transformation of the nabla with L inverse, they are Kudazi coupled. So these three statements are equivalent. So now we have two uh, ways of transforming uh, FN connection. One is through a conjugation, right? And the other is through an uh, operator. So one is through a <coughs> conjugation with respect to a uh, zero to tensor, and the other is uh, uh, through an operator. So uh, there is a nice way of linking the two. There is a nice way of connect connecting the two, and we prove the following theorem, which says that for any connection nabla, and let's say uh, nabla star is a conjugate connection with respect to, say in this case, a metric. If we define uh, an omega, okay, which is basically a, a, a translation of G <coughs> metric, here L is a is a is a arbitrary tangent bundle isomorphism. Then nabla operates on omega is zero if and only if the L operates on the dual of nabla returns the nabla itself. So when explicitly written out, the nab from nabla to nabla star is linked through this the second term. So there there is a second term which basically moves nabla to nabla star. So G conjugation and L gauge transformation are linked in this way. <coughs> now, uh, in general, for any FN connection, but in general, any two FN connection are connected by a zero, uh, by a one two tensor. The difference of any two connections can be is a one two tensor. So uh, this, the two connections that uh, when we when we obtain a new connection by adding a one two tensor to an old connection, in this way we call it a, a translation, a translation of a connection. So the translation will be torsion preserving, if and only if the one to tensor is symmetric. It's straightforward uh, verification. Examples of these uh, K translations uh, include, uh, say, projective transformation, which is always torsion preserving. But we actually look at the breakdown of the projective transformation into two, what we call half transformations, which is P denoted by these two uh, P 
half tra transformations. <coughs> the concatenation of these two tra uh, half transformations would give rise to the traditional tra uh, projected transformation. Now, these half transformations, they are not torsion preserving. So in a sense, each one adds a torsion and the other subtract out that torsion so that the two together will preserve the torsion. Uh, in informing geometry, we also talk about this uh, dual uh, projective transformation. Dual projective transformation is uh, defined with respect to uh, zero two tensor H in the following way where V here is a arbitrary but fixed uh, vector field. V is a fixed vector field. So these are the examples of uh, this general K translation. Now, uh, <coughs> One part of uh, our uh, paper is uh, we work out a commutative uh, prism in this case. We, first, we thought there would be commutative diagrams, but there were just too many diagrams that we are able to put them into very nice uh, prism uh, that talks about the relationships among <coughs> these various transformations. Uh, C here is the uh, conjugation operation, and gamma is the gauge uh, transformation the, through L. And D is this dual projective transformation. So uh, basically, through tracking the torsion that's introduced by each of these transformations, okay, we're able to establish this commutative diagram. And uh, also here, these are the half transformations for P. Uh, OK, so. Uh, Next, what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, okay. So uh, we, want to, uh, we want to investigate uh, the transformation of the connection and along with the transformation of the metric that will, preserve, that will preserve the Kudati coupling. So uh, it is known that this is uh, the so-called conformal projective transformation, uh, which involves two functions. Uh, so you have a transformation of the metric and you also have a transformation of the uh, FN connection. And the conformal projective transformation uh, includes many known uh, special cases, such as the projective transformation of the connection, the conformal transformation of the uh, metric, and along with the, the, the so-called zero conformal transformation transformation of the, the Visavita connection. And then there's this dual projective transformation, which then uh, you have the alpha conformal transformation, alpha where alpha one and alpha minus one, alpha minus one being the dual projective and alpha one, uh, one conformal transformation. And then uh, Kudazi transformation of the G and Navla and so forth. So uh, it is known that the uh, Conform projective transformation to preserve the Kudazi coupling of G and Nabla. So we wonder whether there is a, oops, whether there is generalization of conform projective transformation that will preserve the coupling of, uh, of uh, Nabla and G. So what we find is this uh, slight uh, result, a small result that generalizes, that generalizes the conformal projective transformation. Instead of having two functions, we can, in general, have two vector fields. So we have two vector fields, V and W, and, uh, and along with uh, an operator, which, put, which translates the metric, which perturbs the metric. So for this transformation, basically, it is a concatenation of a projective transformation using this one uh, vector V, and then it is a dual projective, uh, followed by a dual projective transformation using, uh, using G and uh, the other vector. So what we, can sh what we have shown is that this conformal projective, the, this new version of this generalized conformal projective transformation, it will preserve the Kudazi pairing if and only if uh, this L operator is has this form is the conformal transformation. So L operator L is the one that's so basically 
So given the metric here, L is an uh, operator, so this is the GL. So turns out that if we want this to be a conformal or generalized conformal projective transformation that uh, also preserve the Kudazi structure, turns out this L would have to be just basically a multiplication factor of the entire met uh, metric. So therefore leading to a conformal transformation of the metric. And uh, the two uh, vector fields are linked with the two degrees of freedom of, of the two functions in the original conformal projective transformation. Uh, now, finally, I want to say uh, some, I would just take this opportunity to talk about uh, some new results uh, we obtained. This is with another collaborator, Tan Fei, uh, on, uh, actually, you can see as a, as, a, as a natural extension of this work, uh, investigating this uh, particular relationship, uh, characterization of uh, the coupling of G uh, with omega. So in the setting of the uh, Kähler manifold in general, or, uh, or complex manifold, or symplectic, symplectic structure, complex structure on the manifold, we have this uh, so-called uh, compatible triple, G, omega, and L. So L here uh, refers to either an almost complex structure with uh, J square e equal to minus identity, or uh, almost para complex structure where K square is equal identity. So a compatible tri triple refers to the three quantities uh, metric, a symmetric uh, uh, G, and then also a skew symmetric and non degenerate uh, <coughs> two form uh, omega, and uh, transformation L, L in this case can be either J or K, and these three are coupled in the following way. But by the way, this, uh, we found out that the, that the way you, know, you can treat the uh, uh, complex and paracomplex case in, uniform, uh, in the unifying way by referring to the coupling relationship as written as follows. So when L takes J or K, it specializes to the known uh, uh, equalities with respect to the almost complex structure or almost paracomplex structure. So just recall that a manifold is uh, symplectic if there exists a symplectic uh, form, omega, uh, that is closed. So symplectic form being a skew, symmetric, and non-degenerate uh, form. And uh, if the symplectic form is, uh, and, and that is also closed. So uh, in the symplectic manifold, <coughs> We can talk about uh, people call a, a fiducial manifold if the manifold is symplectic and also there exists a torsion-free connection that's uh, uh, oh, that is given a torsion-free connection that is uh, that goes with the symplectic manifold. A symplectic manifold always admits a torsion-free uh, connection, but if that torsion-free connection, uh, if this uh, torsion-free connection is also given, then it's called a fiducial. And a manifold is a Kähler or para -Kähler if the manifold has a this symplectic, this symplectic and, the, and the L operator, this almost complex or almost para -complex operator is integrable. So we asked the question about uh, on this Kähler structure, what kind of a affine connection can, uh, can coexist with this, with this uh, compatible uh, triple? So our main theorem uh, this is proven uh, with uh, uh, Tan Fei, is that if we have any, uh, we, have, we have a torsion-free connection on manifold, and uh, when L denotes uh, either an uh, almost complex or almost paracomplex operator, then for the following three statements, the statement one being Nabla is Kudazi coupled with G, statement two is Nabla is Kudazi coupled with L, and third is basically Nabla is Kudazi coupled with Omega, but since Omega is the uh, uh, skew symmetric form, so nabla coupling with it, it just reduces to nabla being parallel to omega, so there's no extension of that. Whereas in the first two cases, uh, Kudazi coupling is an extension of parallelism. So what we show is that any two of the statements would lead to the third. And 
as a result, M becomes a pair, a, a kaler or a parakaler. So essentially, with the kaler or parakaler structure, which has rigidly interlocked uh, quantities G, omega, and L, we allow or admit a fourth uh, quantity, the FN connection, which very nicely live together with this kaler structure. And the way the nabla fits in is it's kula decoupling with the three quantities that make up the compatible triple. So uh, the result can also be stated as, uh, so the kula decoupling of nabla and L. So in the statistical manifold, there's a kula decoupling of nabla with G. But if furthermore, there's a kula decoupling of nabla with L, then it turns the statistical manifold into a Kähler or parakaler manifold. Okay. And that coupling also turns the Fedusov manifold into a Kähler and parakaler manifold. So another way of stating is that a, a Kähler and parakaler manifold is both a Fedusov manifold and a statistical manifold. So that's the, our uh, general conclusion. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.